good guys are just doing their job. I've got by all these years without having said anything yet that I should be saying. But I'm good, capable of that, you know. Aren't we all? So uh, be nice to them that they're, they're just doing their job. I, I always feel compelled to give you a fair warning um, because when, when you get up to, to speak or ask a question, you know, unless you want to appear in some negative ad here in the you know, next fall, I, you might not want to do that. So, um, sure. and, um, so uh, thank you all for, for being here. And I want to uh, particularly thank the Minnesota uh, Citizens Federation uh, for the work that they do. Uh, it's a private, uh, nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan group. And uh, they're out <coughs> trying to promote fairness in our society and to promote healthy communities uh, in our society and to, uh, to create a good, uh, wholesome economy in society. And there have been uh, many questions raised in uh, recent years about Social Security and about Medicare. And uh, they've got a lot of, of information um, about it. And it's a conversation that's occurring uh, in Washington and in uh, the so-called, you know, think tanks uh, around the country. And it's no secret that there have been proposals I, yeah, to like uh, private uh, privatize Social Security. Never such a thing. Neither and we. Uh, on the basis He's of the belief job. that it's in uh, serious financial trouble and that it won't be there. Uh, perhaps for this generation, uh, uh, when you talk to young people, they are convinced that it won't be there uh, for them. Uh, it's always uh, been my view uh, that those are, are big lies um, and that there's a reason or rationale why they're being told. Uh, they have hopefully some of the facts and information they have here will, will be helpful to us. Um, the same thing is being said of Medicare and the desire uh, to turn that over to uh, the insurance companies uh, where, where they, they once were. And I, I think the same, in my judgment, you know, they still apply. And uh, just to preface the meeting, uh, it's, it's important, I believe, you know, for all of us to be mindful uh, of where we've been and where we've come from. And I have said, and I believe this with all my heart, um, our generation, most of us here in this room, have been uh, blessed with perhaps more prosperity, more freedom uh, than perhaps any generation maybe in the history of the world. If you grew up in a modest income, you know, middle class family, uh, and you were uh, a white person, middle class person, you had a lot of opportunities. You could uh, go to work just about anywhere and make a pretty good living. And there was a good chance, you know, because of Medicare, because of Social Security, because of insurance and, and, and pensions, you were going to live uh, pretty comfortable. I mean, I always I said in our generation, if you were going to be a total failure, you had to like have a plan. Um, Know, it was uh, that that's just and and that's what we're losing that's what's getting away from us uh, people uh, young people in particular uh, are not going to be receiving the pension plans that many people have I've got a meeting tomorrow morning uh, with uh, pensioners who are losing their pensions so even our pensions you know that we work for, pay for, and earn are, are not necessarily the secure anymore. And that's a result of action was taken by the Congress of the United States of America that I voted against. And I'm, I'm fighting and working against. And I, I'm fairly confident we're going to have some success in defeating what they're trying to do. Um, but we see the growing disparity between the rich and the poor rich getting richer, degrees unparalleled, maybe in human history. Uh, we see the poor getting poorer, and we see this 
middle class, you know, that most of us grew up in uh, being obliterated, uh, being destroyed. And, 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 and that's where we are at um, as a society. In fact, they say now the disparity uh, in wealth and income is, is greater than it was just prior to the Great Depression. Uh, it's the kind of thing that's never worked well for any economy or any society, and I don't know what gives any of us reason to believe that it's going to work well for us. It hasn't worked in the past. We built this great middle class that became the model of the world that people all over the world aspired to. And in terms of being grateful, think about this. Think about this. In our grandparents' time, the life expectancy in this country was 70, that's 47 years of age. That's right, 47 years of age in our grandparents' time. And in a little over a generation, it's almost 80. Think about it. Most of us wouldn't be here at this meeting today. You know? Um, that may be one of the greatest achievements in humankind. And it didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. It happened as a result of a number of things. One of them was Medicare that afforded elderly people an opportunity to get the health care that they needed to stay alive. Another part of it has been Social Security. Gave people some income that they could rely on. Again, for healthier, better living than trying to scrape by in, in abject poverty. So those things were a big part of it. There were other things, you know, like OSHA. Oh, the ocean is a terrible thing. No, it's not. You know, I, I owned a sawmill in a pallet factory. You couldn't find anybody in that business that could count to 10 on your fingers. You know why. <laughs> you didn't have 10 fingers. You're looking to have a hand. You know, well, it was for want of a few safety switches and a few uh, safety guards. And uh, uh, as a result of it, in, in my deal, we never had any serious accidents. And maybe a couple guys cut their hand or somebody sprained an ankle. Um, I used to represent the boat works in Little Falls. I think that's the largest producer of fiberglass boats anywhere in the world. I'll never forget um, Mr. Lindblade down the road. He had the first fiberglass boat I, I ever saw. And he said, boy, these things are really going to revolutionize uh, fishing and boating. And uh, he, he used to just tie a rope onto it and drag it behind his car. <laughs> down the gravel road between Breakers and Pequot, my grandma's. Um, thank God they finally put them on trailers. Um, but you know, the kids there came to me when we were trying to put OSHA in place. They were 25, 30 years of age, and their life was over because their lungs were full of fiberglass. For want of a, a little a mask and a little ventilation. Well, guess what? Little Falls is still producing more fiberglass boats than anybody else in the country. But they retire at a ripe old age, you know, like most of the rest of us who've been, been lucky enough to be able to do that. Uh, because they have the mask and they have the mask. And the main point being, um, uh, we doubled the life expectancy. Social Security, Medicare, health, safety, these various protections, clean air, clean water, you know, they've all played a big role in it. Not to mention advances and medical science and technology cures, you know. Um, most of us in this room worried about getting polio. Uh, some of us may very well have gotten it, but, you know, Dr. Slock came up with a vaccine, and, and uh, you could go on and on about all the advances that made that possible. So you say to yourself uh, sometimes, you know, what have you learned in life? Well, those things didn't come easily. They were hard-fought battles, political battles. And what is politics? It's, 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 politics is, 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 affects every aspect of our lives. It's, it's not a, that's, that's not a, a goal, it's just a reality. The, the time, the, the, the time on, the, on the clock is a political decision. You 
know, the air we're breathing in this room is partly a political decision. The chemicals and the shampoo you washed your hair with this morning is partly a political, the fabric in your clothing, uh, the roads, the bridges, I mean, everything. Politics affects everything. And I'm not advocating that, I'm just stating that as a fact. It just does. So we need to be mindful of the fact that there were powerful forces pushing back on a lot of this progress. And they haven't gone away. That's one of the things I learned. I mean, I thought once you reached a certain level of progress, it might take some people a few you know, years to get comfortable with it and adjust to it and, uh, and, and figure out how to, how to deal with it. Uh, and that's reasonable. But there are still powerful forces that want to roll it all back. So why? That's a good question. You have to ask yourself why. Um, and I think the first step is to get the facts. You know, get the information out there, particularly as it relates, uh, in this case, to Social Security and Medicare. Um, so um, with that, um, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to introduce you to Buddy Robinson, uh, who heads up this foundation. And they've been working and studying this issue. So uh, Buddy, if it's all right, I'd, I'd like you to take over, uh, make your presentation, and, and then you'll be available for some, for some questions, won't you? And I will as well. So uh, please give a buddy a, a nice warm welcome. Well, yeah, thank, thank you, 